regular council meeting of the village of Armada will now come to order where everyone rise for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Call for order, please. Shaw? Here. Clark? Here. Conan? Here. Bullock? Here. Taylor? Here. Here. Cooper? Is absent. Belky? Here. What is the council's wishes approval on the agenda, please? Mr. President, I'll move the agenda to be approved as presented. Support. Moved and supported. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. At this time, we're opening up the floor to citizen comments. State your name for the record and take, you can have up to three minutes to address the board, please. Hi, I'm Carolyn Sweeney, I live on Bolton. I'm here tonight to urge the council to vote no on all three iterations of the sidewalk sale policy before you tonight. None of them address the issues that my fellow business owners and I have brought to your attention. Uh, the first option only clarifies signage issues and removes the fee, which no one was all that interested in having anyway. Second option removes the indemnification requirement but retains the rider requirement. And the third it, uh, includes the indemnification but loses the rider. But, but yeah, by the way, right We have repeatedly told you that the indemnification and the rider are both unnecessary and onerous to the business community. If someone was hurt on my property or by my property, my existing coverage would be adequate. I should not have to buy additional coverage for the village. Moreover, there is still a requirement in each iteration that we would need to apply in advance and get approval from the code enforcer who would establish himself as an arbitrary and hostile person to work with. Council is endeavoring to drastically change the culture of Armada with its increased rules. I object strenuously to the attempt to make Armada into a soulless, homogenous Detroit suburb without regard to, to retaining its charm and independence. I urge you to vote no. Anyone else at this time, please? Okay. Oh, I, I would ask you to vote no on it also. The business people in town really need to have this vote of no on. Thank, Thank you. you. Next. Step up anyone again. Yes, Karen Davis. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, again. <laughs> uh, I encourage you to vote no too. I, you know, I moved out here about eight years ago, and I like the community, but we need to make it easy and prosperous for businesses to thrive here, so that more people want to be brought out to our made of of all different types, and the businesses shouldn't have to sacrifice things. Sir. <laughs> I'm gonna take it now. Uh, Matt Beeman, president of the Armada Area uh, Chamber of Commerce. I. I urge you to vote no as well for the reasons <laughs> Carolyn pretty well clearly spoke out on. Um, I, the hostility that that we feel that almost seems to be coming from the council was very well uh, shown an example of after our last meeting uh, that we attended to speak. I believe that was, was that two meetings ago? It was two meetings ago after Brandon did go on a little bit long and about the benches and then the next day somebody went out and moved one of the benches. It was a sarcastic little move that just seemed to really, it really show exactly what people, what's, what I don't know if the whole council, but apparently somebody really thought it was funny to move the bench from in front of his house, right, or his business, when all he was doing was trying to make an example and got stuck on a point that he kept repeating because he's not used to speaking in public. It, it was just, it's kind of shameful. Um, once again, please vote no and stop treating the businesses with that kind of ire. Thank you. Anyone else? Can I, can I talk now or no? Sure you can. I just going to wait for counsel. <coughs> Brandon talked to me for probably an hour and a half after that meeting, requesting that the bench be moved. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So. I'm, su I'm personally surprised because he came to me the next day and says, they moved my bench! Then he's playing both ends of the of the stick sure. because he requested to have that moved. Sorry. Anyone else? 
I'm Jennifer Farah. I live on Fulton Street. Just vote no, please. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, that's closed. There's no presentations uh, tonight. <coughs> Administrative reports. Uh, you have the building department report, the liaison reports that can be had here. Uh, any liaison reports, uh, Mr. Clark, Mr. I've got it under old business. I'll talk about the sewer plan. Okay, thank you. Um, I just want to touch on the DPW uh, position, which is still open. Um, I wasn't at the last meeting, but I did watch the, um, the tape. I prepared something else to put in the paper. I hope you all had a chance to review it. I, it doesn't give a salary requirement or anything. I don't know if you guys want a salary requirement in it or not, but this hasn't been put in yet. So I just wanted to make sure that you guys know that's what's going on. I and notice, I notice you says, it says applications accepted until 531 Well, that can be changed. I was going to say. Yeah, no, that can be changed. That. I, I just don't know. I mean, basically, this is just the nuts and bolts. I just wanted you to check mm -hmm. the nuts and bolts. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure where you want me to advertise. We have advertised <coughs> everywhere. I, I, I mean, I don't know what else to do. Right. But, so. This has been ongoing. So, um, we sure need somebody in that department. Though. Absolutely. So, okay. Maybe the record could do a little article on the open position. If that would help you know it might reach some people you know I just don't know I mean we've, we've gone in trade magazines or trade sites we've gone in the newspaper we've gone in every newspaper around I just I don't know what else to do it's on the website it's in the window I'm not sure what else you want to do but I mean I would be happy to place it again into the record and if you want me to put it into the voice so it reaches a few more people I can do that or Macomb Daily? Macomb Daily. I did the Macomb Daily one time, but I can do it again. I, you know, that's... I guess we don't have much choice. Okay. Uh, have you tried the MML? The MML? Um, the MML charges you to put in, um, put them in, and Ed didn't seem to think the MML would reach who it needed to reach. He had me put it in Waterworks. I don't remember mm. what, which one. Um, so that's what I did. But, I mean, I could, I could put it. I mean, they all cost to put in the paper or in okay. any advertisement, but I just don't know what else to do. So. Well, we paid quite a bit of money the last time we did we that. Paid, yeah, we paid a lot of money for advertising. So I, I'm kind of at a loss. I mean, if you want me to just put it in the local papers again, we can do that. So that's what it's That there might for. be the best uh, if we can get something <coughs> locally or close by to our, our community. So uh, uh, instead of... Mm -hmm. Statewide. So I'll put it in the record. Involved, you know, I'll put it like in the record and the voice. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Again. It's local. Yeah. Yeah. Something local. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, I do have a report on West Main Street project. We are getting quotes for the culvert on West Main Street, and MDOT has changed their. Um, uh, what the heck is that called? It's a uh, easement. Uh, forms we've got to go back out and get two easements re-signed that don't have to be notarized or anything because they were notarized before. Um, so I will be talking with those two uh, residents about that. Very good. Okay. So then we will eventually, very soon, most likely try to go for, for bids on that project. Right? That's correct. Yes, uh, I've been looking for a, a bid letting July and the award will be in August and starting will be in September. Okay. I just hope our dates work good because we need, be both. we need to get this started before uh, you know fall That's right. winter comes in on this and so uh, probably more than merrier the bids if we can get them and I know probably most of the companies are busy too now so uh, we'll, we'll do our best at that, right, Mr. Ballard? Okay, thank you, yes. And uh, I will assist you as much as I can, you know, thank through, you. like we told you. Uh, Mike, do you want to talk about this? Yeah, see, Mary's now with that, Michael. Okay, uh, like I said earlier, I'm not sure what the uh, purpose is for, but there shouldn't be any problem with that as long as we're staying on the sidewalks. Yeah. Okay. 
So they're going to, St. Mary's will be doing a procession from the Lions Hall Lions. to the church on June 3rd at approximately 9.30 to 10, however long it takes them to walk down there. So if you see them walking, that's what they're doing. Okay. We have a copy of the Planning Commission meeting minutes on there of April 2nd. Uh, if you have any questions on that, uh, Mr. Cronin is here. No, it's or, Mr. Shaw. I mean, yeah, Mr. Shaw. Yeah, Mr. Sorry. Yeah, Mr. Shaw. Um, <coughs> we're, we're talking to Fritz, uh, we're in talking negotiations about what's going on at that property over there. He, it doesn't look like the condos are going are gonna to fly, so that's where we're at, we're in negotiations. Okay. okay. Very good. Thank you. General business, consent agenda, approval of the regular council meeting minutes of April 23rd. Uh, what is the council's wishes, please? Mr. President, I'll move the consent agenda to be accepted as presented. Support. Moved and supported. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. <coughs> and Did you mention the special, the Memorial Day parade? Uh, under the special event permits? Yeah, I haven't yet. No. Okay. Uh, The Abbots will have the uh, White Forest Sales the Memorial Day Parade, which nationally uh, uh, it's paying uh, tribute to all our veterans and uh, deceased and living nationally. And uh, I'd like to see a lot of people turn out and uh, give them a lot of support. So uh, whatever you can do to help out the veterans, we appreciate that from our our side here. And uh, then there's a special permit uh, uh, event permitted by the Pell uh, organization, Place Athletic League. Uh, the leadership uh, team, which would be on the four corners, in which they considered sales. So that has been usually the standing thing that we approve. Usually, all organizations uh, for non-profit that. Non-profit organizations. Non-profit, yes. And the thing is that there was a time there last year where the state was <coughs> not to do it or let them do it because of the state law. So we followed the law, and the thing is now, <coughs> excuse me, the law has been changed to go ahead and let these organizations go ahead and do it. So any community organization that wants to do that on our village streets can do that. Nonprofit. Nonprofit. Non Nonprofits. Right. <clears throat> okay, the next to the uh, old business. Uh, the sewer plan update, which would be Mr. Clark, please. Sure, thank you. Uh, we had the uh, gas monitors recalibrated. Uh, they came in uh, just a couple of days ago. I stopped in with Chris Lonner <coughs> talk to the gentleman that was doing it uh, because he had a, an idea to put a quote together for us with the, we'd be able to run the plant with smartphones. This is an option I would have been wanting to have. It's not going to be cheap if they're going to put a quote together for us so that when an alarm goes off at 2 in the morning, they can look at their phone and see exactly what the alarm is for, bring it up on their screen and it's just like they're looking at the PLC down at the plant. Mm -hmm. They could run things do a couple of things, see if things will come back online properly. And like I said, uh, we're going to get a quote on that. And I'll bring it back before council and see if that's something that we want to do. With it. I think it'll save us money yes. in the long run on a lot of these call-offs. I'm sure they'll have yeah. some kind of an additional charge for, you know, somebody's up at 2 in the morning yeah. figuring things out for a half hour, but it sure beats driving in from Lansing or wherever sure they're coming from. So uh, I hope to see that in the next couple of weeks. So. That's all I've got right now. Very good, Mr. Clark. Thank you. Uh, next is the new business. Number one will be the sidewalk sales policy. Uh, you have uh, information in your packet. Uh, and ask what the council's wishes are.
Well, when I looked at everything, I thought option two seemed to be the best one, but now I'm hearing from businesses again, they don't care for any of them. Uh, see, they remove the identification requirement, remove the permit fee. Uh, and if they want to come in, they know they're going to have sales during the year, they come in, uh, they take it one time and uh, have it all set up. That's that's my take on it. But, um, I thought we had taken care of the main stumbling blocks that uh, we had. The, the two things that I saw that I thought were the hardest, uh, that would be the hardest to deal with were the 30-day notice and the limit on the number of times uh, that they could have it. Um, so this, those have been removed um, months ago. Um, I agree that we need something because we don't, we can't enforce anything if we don't have any kind of policy. There's just no guidance on it at all for what the village can do. If there's a complaint, we have we don't really have anything to enforce. So I think it's important to put something in place. Mm -hmm. I agree for it. There has to be something in place. Absolutely. You can shake your head no, but I saw pictures of some of the businesses that put stuff out on the sidewalks, and I thought you got to be kidding me. Really, oh. really. Right. Now, there's a lot of communities that don't even that don't even do it because of the liability of it. I mean, it was hard to find uh, communities when we did our research that actually um, still did it with a you know in a robust manner because the the liability and the, the climate is just not that conducive any longer. So the the fact that that we want to do that and that we're trying to work together to find a solution that works for everybody, sure, I think should. Um, I so thought well. not asking for extra insurance, but then them to hold us harmless mm -hmm. with, you know, that's option three. But then the, like, uh, can you explain the difference in that, Jeff? Yeah, the financial burden is much harder on it. Uh, if we were to require both or, or the identification, <coughs> you, you know, then the identification gave the, the business would have to actually provide a defense, you know, to the, to the village. So they agreed to hold us harmless and indemnify us against claims. So again, it's easier to have an insurance company come in and defend both parties than it is to, for us to go after the business and say, here's the loss and defend us. You have but if they have to get an insurance policy, doesn't that cost them extra money? Yeah. Whereas yeah. the indemnification doesn't cost them anything. Oh, sure it does. <laughs> if, we were, if, if both parties were sued, then, then they would have to tender a defense. Um, they have to indemnify me. So if they didn't, they could say, well, we're not going to defend you. Then we would have to sue them if we were found liable uh, as a result of the use of the sidewalk. So the consequences financially are much harder on the, the business um, uh, under the indemnification situation. The other thing I wanted to add to follow up on Sam's point, um, that this is a really, again, I know there's a lot of, uh, you know, some hard feelings, but this is a really unique situation, as I said at the last meeting. I, I, I'm not aware of a lot of communities where the public sidewalk goes right up to the, the doorstep of a commercial business. You know what I mean? It truly is a unique situation. I remember when we were doing um, the sidewalk improvements and we got title work, and it was, was surprising to see that it literally went up to the doorstep. I'm not seeing that doesn't occur in other communities, but. I think you'd be hard pressed to find another one. So it's not, to Sam's point, it's not really about wanting to necessarily regulate sales in that, but it is a use of the village's property. And as we've demonstrated with you know, both the uh, special events and, and uh, other, other items where people have wanted to use the village property, the requirements have been pretty standardized now over the years. So it's not, we're not going and adding a new requirement that isn't required of any other business or um, use anybody who's wanted to use the village property these are fairly standard requirements council have anything else if not i would entertain a motion from the council I make a motion to approve the sidewalk sales policy and permit application option number two, which includes the insurance but not the indemnification as presented. 
support. It has been moved and supported. Uh, any further discussion? Yeah. We're going to remove the indemnification. Correct. Jeff, what does that mean? What well, we, does that does that mean that that the business owners are going to have they have their liability insurance? Correct. Uh -huh. Okay. And <clears throat> So where does that leave us? If they have, that, are they assuming full liability? No. What 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 would be left over if we removed the indemnification is they would mm -hmm. basically have to provide with their application uh, a certificate of insurance um, that identifies the village as an additional insured. So if a lawsuit were to occur, someone was injured as a result of the activity, you know, the sidewalk sales activity, the insurance company would come in and defend both parties if both were named. If the village was just named, the insurance company will, will, will defend the, the village. So again, as we talked last meeting, that's where your costs are, are at. Costs I mean, we've, we've gotten out of lawsuits with zero liability, mm -hmm. but you know, a fairly substantial, <coughs> fairly substantial defense cost. Where if you look at number three, and we remove that insurance requirement, but if they would sign an indemnification and hold harmless agreement on a form provided by us, what does that do for us? So in that situation, the village would have to pay defense costs. Okay. And then for we, us. For us. But then okay. we, if there was any damages, if the court found out that there were, you know, a judgment entered against mm -hmm. the village, we would have to go after pursuant to the indemnification and hold harmless, we would have to go after the business to recover mm -hmm. those damages. So again, okay. that, that could be quite a bit more than yeah, having an sure insurance company sure. come in. And, and again, the, the, the business owners brought up, they, they're correct. I mean, we haven't had a, a flood of claims, no. but you know, it's the claim that comes where someone is hurt that, that bites you. you know, so. Well, I think we talked about it before. I mean, the business has insurance, we have insurance. Even if we were held, you know, uh, identification, if they had that, you can bet we're going to get sued no matter what. Right, right. So I, I, I just feel it's a hardship to them. They have their insurance, we have insurance. I don't know, that's my thought anyway. Anything else from council? <clears throat> if not, I'll call her. Belkey? Yes. Clark? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Uh, Conan? Yes. Wallach? Yes. Baylor? Yes. Motion carried. <coughs> Next is a request for bids for our roofs on our village buildings that are in dire need of a new roof. So uh, we are requesting council give us permission to seek bids. Yeah, this is for the what the Tencent Tencent bar the DPW the DPW building and, and that abandoned well house. Right. Three, three. Where's that one at? Next to the 10th Center. Oh, right? Yeah, Isn't it? Right over there. Right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little closer up into the parking lot of uh, the grain there. Okay. Yeah. So, um, do you need a motion? We need a motion to, have to have seek bids, yes. Uh, yeah. I'll move that. Uh, and Sarah Zowski. Oh, you got it here? You know, I do have it here, too. You do. <laughs> um, Resolved to allow DPW supervisor to obtain quotes to repair the roofs on 73 300 Floral Street, which is the DPW garage, 73235 Holton Street, the abandoned well house of Holton, and the 10 cent barn. Support. Moved and supported. Any further discussion? Yes, what, what type of roofs are we going to put on? Well, I think we should get a price on the asphalt and also the tin roofs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, see whatever is cheaper and uh, you know uh, 
we may have some preferences as to, you know, maybe the tin roof will last longer. Yeah. You know, because we, we want a 25 year shingle uh, on the asphalt if that's the case. Right. Uh, so, I mean, they're not going to play. They've got a 40 year guarantee. Yeah, because they got to last. That, that's the thing. We can't keep going, okay. you know, after a new roof all the time. It's been a long time since I've been <laughs> Well, yes, yes. Yeah. I can't remember when it was. Maybe you know, the so. DPW part. I'm not sure that might have been done. But yeah, well, that's newer. Time. Yeah, that's newer. So. Uh, but yeah, I think that's the thing that uh, we'll get prices on both and go from there. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, all right. Uh, uh, we just, you know, we won't take a roll call on this. No, no, no. Call for the vote. Just, just call for the vote, in other words. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Uh, Zoning Board of Appeals, fee increases, and tax amendments for the council's wishes. Mr. President, I'll resolve to approve the increase of the application fee for the ZBA from 300 dollars to four hundred dollars and to approve the additional fee for attorney planner or engineer review from two hundred and fifty to three hundred dollars and to approve the amended text of the application support moved and supported any further discussion i've got a question do we have to put it in a newspaper publication every time i know we have mailings that go out in a certain radius for the ZBA notice? Yeah. Yes. That's, it, that's the law. It has to do that. That's, that's a big part of the, the fee. It that is. Goes yeah. that. I was public, hoping. Yeah. Public hearing. If you want. Any type of public hearing. Yeah. Okay. Now, if they, did, if they had an agenda without a public hearing, I suppose they could get And they do the have those now, where you don't, those don't have uh, But any, you know, most of the ones required a public hearing, they have to publish. Okay. All right. I'm just hoping that maybe we can save a few bucks for somebody, but. This is a hundred fifty dollar increase, and that just that covers the um, increase in uh, postage and the cost of the publication. Mm -hmm. uh, so the additional the that's first the three hundred to four hundred that would take care of that, and then you may or may not have planner or lawyer that's going from two fifty to three hundred. Mm -hmm. So it might just be a hundred bucks. Yeah, right, for a typical person, if, if the lawyer or planner isn't involved. Any other questions, discussion? If not, we want to roll call, please. Ballard? Yes. Clark? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Um, Conan? Yes. Wallach? Yes. Elton? Yes. Motion carried. Mark, just one more thing for the record. Any unused funds on those applications is returned to the applicant. Mm -hmm. So if there isn't an attorney fee, that, that whole amount's going back to them. If, uh, if for some reason it's on a remote corner of the village and there's only just a smaller radius to send the, uh, at the notices out to, that's a smaller cost, so there's more that gets returned to them in their, from their deposit. So it's not like the village is just keeping extra money now. Right. And we would kind of know up front, the, the, depending on the, what they wanted, if the, the lawyer nature, or planner was right. going to be involved at all. Yeah, the nature of the request is right. usually going up front. Okay, very good. Uh, up and coming agenda items, council having? I think uh, we should note that next week's meeting is, uh, or our next meeting is going to be next Monday. Yeah. 420 or 521 because of uh, Memorial Day at the same time, seven o'clock. Right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> same time, yes. Mr. President, I will not be, a, be available for that meeting. I'll be out of time. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> next is the citizen comment. The floor is open up to citizens once more. Anyone wish to address the comments? not council comments council have any thank you um we got uh from the mml they um they sent actually the amount of revenue sharing that you've lost since 2002 um for all for all the communities so i pulled up our made up 
and in 2003, we had lost $6,226. In 2016, we're down $710,908. Well, 710,908,010. That's how much we're down. That's how much we're down. Mm -hmm. So I've got copies of that if anybody wants it. But um, I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, I like them too. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, community events. Uh, council have any new? Mm, no. Memorial Day parade. Yeah, well, okay. We'll announce that at the next meeting also. Uh, and tonight we don't have any closed sessions. Uh, or requested or anything. So uh, next is a, I'll entertain a motion for an adjournment for the council. Adjournment. Mr. President, it is seven, seven thirty-one. Thirty-one or thirty-two. Seven thirty-one. I move to adjourn. Second. Any further discussion? Did you get, I get support? Yeah. 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 All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Motion carried.